Dr. Katrina Merkies is a researcher and associate professor at the University of Guelph. Today we're going to be talking about asymmetries in equines and some of the implications when it comes to saddle fit. Welcome Dr. Merkies and thank you for joining us. It's great to be here. Thank you, Jackie. What factors led to this study of thoracic asymmetry in ridden horses? Uh, this study of thoracic asymmetry was actually an undergraduate project, and it was part of a capstone course for students in the Bachelor of Bioresource Management Equine Management degree program. And um, this course partners fourth year students with an equine business, and they work together on a project of the business's choosing. And one of our partners that year was Saddle Fit for Life. And it was their idea to utilize the mounds of saddle fitting data that they had collected over the years. And from their experience, they believed that asymmetry was present in horses and they wanted to see if the empirical data would support this hypothesis. Wow, what a great partnership <laughs> that was formed there. Yes, fantastic. Uh, so were you surprised to find out that out of 490 horses in this retrospective study, 60% of them had larger measurements on the left side of the winners? No, we weren't actually surprised to um, obtain that finding since that was our hypothesis. So we expected these results. And that was based on um, you know, the anecdotal evidence that the saddle fitters had noticed over the years. And uh, what are the consequences of using a symmetrical saddle on an asymmetrical horse? Well, I like to um, think of it like a perfectly matched pair of shoes. And so when you buy a pair of shoes in the store, they're both the same size, <laughs> they're symmetrical. Um, and I know that for myself, my left foot is bigger than my right foot. <clears throat> and I have a large callus on my left heel. Um, and so when I buy a matched pair of shoes from the store, my left big toe pushes against the front of the shoe and my heel ends up with a blister. And to circumvent this, I end up walking a bit lopsided. And so I put less weight on my left foot and I curl my left toes inside my shoe. And over time, this causes strain to my right leg for compensation and to my lower back. So I often wish that I could buy a size eight and a half shoe for my left foot and a size eight for my right foot. And I think for horses, it's similar where they learn to carry themselves in the most comfortable manner underneath the saddle. Uh, but over, times this can, over time, this can cause pressure points leading to back pain and other issues. And additionally, it will affect the horse's performance. And if the rider or the trainer isn't aware of the effect of an ill-fitting saddle, they may try to solve the performance issues by other means, like adding extra equipment or changing the feeding program. And uh, a final point about using a symmetrical saddle on an asymmetrical horse is that it actually prevents the development of the horse's muscles in a balanced way. Uh, if there are pressure points under the saddle, this will cause the horse to develop his musculature in an even more unbalanced way. That's a great analogy and that makes total sense. Reading through the abstract, the study abstract, I noticed it said Breed did not affect wither measurement. Now, one has to imagine that there are significant differences between, say, the withers of a thoroughbred versus a draft. Can you explain what is meant here? So this was a bit surprising to find that breed did not affect the wither measurements, but it's perhaps due to our specific data set. So of the 490 horses, almost 43% of those horses were warm bloods and only a very small number were other breed types like drafts. Um, and then when we analyze results, statistical rules tell us that we should use a probability level of 95%. And uh, that means that we can say with 95% probability that the left wither measurements are larger than the right. And the probability value that we had for breed was actually 91%. So it was pretty close. And we could have said that there was a tendency for breed to affect wither measurement. And logically that would make sense as you've described. However, when we tried to analyze breed differences further, no clear picture emerged. So while breed does affect the wither structure, 
that is thoroughbreds and warm bloods have longer withers say than drafts this didn't extend to affecting the wither measurements which is based more on the muscling of the withers rather than the skeletal structure so also in the abstract, the, uh, it said the horse's level of training did not affect wither measurement. But then it also states asymmetry may be due to genetics, environment, or training. <clears throat> and this should be considered when fitting a saddle to the horse. Can you fill us in on more details there? Sure. In our specific data set, we didn't find statistical evidence of training affecting wither measurements. However, that can't rule out that training may have an effect. So our data was collected by saddle fitting specialists from one moment in time and analyzed retrospectively. Uh, it would be interesting to set up a controlled research study that would evaluate asymmetry at set time points within a training plan. So even if training does not affect wither measurements, it may affect other measurements related to saddle fit, which we didn't report here such as tree width or wither clearance. And so when you're having a saddle fitted to your horse, the saddle fitter should definitely be asking all the questions pertaining to the horse's genetics, environment, and training to understand exactly what is needed. This study included riders from many backgrounds and many levels, and were the asymmetries less in horses competing at more advanced levels? It would make sense that more experienced riders would be able to balance and gymnasticize their horse better than less experienced riders. And that was shown by in a study by Clayton and Hobbs in 2017. However, our data set was not a controlled sample and the experienced riders could have been riding green horses just as well as advanced horses. And the reverse might have been true as well, where the less experienced riders were riding advanced horses as schoolmasters. So our data were unable to show a rider level effect. Again, this does not necessarily mean that there isn't an effect. Are there parallels between asymmetrical musculature and asymmetrical skeletal structure? That's a great question. Other studies have shown that there is asymmetry in skeletal structures. And horses generally have longer right legs and thicker left legs. But I don't know of any studies that have linked the skeletal asymmetry specifically to muscular asymmetry in horses. On a logical level, this would make sense that this would be the case. And were there interesting aspects of the study pertaining to laterality? That's a great question too. So laterality is the preference for using one side of the body over another, and it's controlled by the different brain hemispheres. So the left brain hemisphere, which is responsible for logic and reasoning, controls the right side of the body. And the right brain hemisphere, which processes fearful stimuli, controls the left side of the body. For this reason, you might notice that horses often turn to face a novel or a frightening object to uh, view it with their left eye. And they also prefer to step on or off a trailer with their left foreleg first. There was a study done in Australia that showed that thoroughbred and standardbred horses prefer to graze with their left leg forward more often and that this tendency increases with age. So it may be that left lateralization affects muscle development. And if, for example, horses are grazing with their left leg forward for a large portion of the time, it may lead to larger muscles on their left shoulder. Well, that's going to make me go look at my horse grazing in the field next time I see her. <laughs> Absolutely. Any surprises uh, when interpreting the data from this study? We were surprised at the finding that the back curvature, which basically measured how dipped or swayed the back was, was greater in horses that were of medium height, so not pony size and not um, very tall. So thinking about this, it might make sense if you consider that medium sized horses are perhaps more common or more desirable and may often be ridden by larger people. So that is adults rather than children. So if you have a smaller person, they get a smaller horse, um, but 
once you become an adult, you kind of tend to move on to the larger horses. And if uh, a larger adult is riding a medium sized horse, it could be that the saddle is often too large for the horse. Um, so the saddle fits the rider, but it doesn't fit the horse necessarily. And if the saddle fits past the 18th thoracic vertebra, um, it will put pressure on the lumbar region and that causes the horse to tense and drop his back muscles. So potentially this could be what's happening and, and why our results showed that middle height horses had slightly more dipped backs. This study was conducted using retrospective data, as we've mentioned. How can future studies of asymmetry and saddle fit benefit the horse? There's a need for controlled studies looking at body symmetry and saddle fit. For example, if an asymmetrical saddle was properly fitted to an asymmetrical horse, would that prevent pressure points and thereby allow the horse to develop more symmetrically over time? Saddle fit should be checked and adjusted at least every six months, and this would allow for a continuous improvement in the muscle balance. So the longitudinal studies would be really beneficial to determine the effect of training or rider experience, for example, over time on the horse's muscle development. And um, that might answer the question if experienced riders do indeed improve the horse's musculature, resulting eventually in a more symmetrical saddle fit. Very interesting stuff. And we look forward to hearing more about future studies. Thanks uh, for joining us and for sharing your, your knowledge. Thanks so much for having me.